You bought the best gaming monitor, a powerful CPU and a beast of a graphics card, but games somehow still don't feel as responsive as you would like them to. This situation is very frustrating, because while you can clearly feel that something is off, the only way to know for sure is to use special equipment to measure the end-to-end -end latency of your system. And that is not only hard to come by, devices like Nvidia's L that also require some expertise to use and make sense of the data. At least that used to be the case, because now we have monitors that come with Nvidia's Reflex Latency Analyzer built right into the display, which allows everyone to quickly and easily measure how much lag they are affected by. So in today's video I will not only show you how this technology enables you to put an end to the guesswork when it comes to how responsive a game is. I will also show you how you can use Nvidia's performance analyzer in combination with the reflex latency analyzer to easily create detailed charts like these in Microsoft Excel using a template that I provide for free. With these charts it's really easy to make sense of the latency and performance data when you are troubleshooting a problem or try to optimize a game to be as responsive as possible. So the monitor that I use for this tutorial is the 27 inch ASUS PG27AQN which Nvidia sent me to take a look at. The monitor has a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1440 a maximum refresh rate of 360Hz, it supports G-Sync and most importantly comes with the Reflex Latency Analyzer. The PC that I use for this tutorial has an ASUS ROG Strix Z790E motherboard, an Intel Core i7-3700K, 16GB of DDR5 memory and an RTX 2080 Ti. Now how do we set this up so that the monitor can measure the time from pressing the left mouse button to the result showing up on the monitor? First we use the included USB cable to connect the monitor to the PC. Next we connect the mouse to the pass-through USB port on the monitor where the reflex latency analyzer listens to the data packets sent by the mouse, which is how it detects that we pressed the left mouse button. Then we need to configure GeForce Experience. For that we press Alt and Z on the keyboard to access the GeForce Experience overlay. Now click on Settings and then HUD Layout. What I like to do is change the location of the status overlay to the top right. And for performance I select FPS. Then we need to create a few keyboard shortcuts for the performance overlay. Next we go to the performance monitoring section. Here I like to increase the number of latency samples that is used for the average values in the overlay. And since we also want to create latency and performance charts later, we must set a folder where the log files will be stored, which contain the data from the reflex latency analyzer, as well as the performance monitoring. Now this is not required, but if you have a hard time remembering all these shortcuts, like I do, then a Stream Deck from Elgato makes your life a lot easier, as you can simply create a button for each hotkey so that you don't have to remember them. Now let's do some testing. Currently we have the performance overlay set to only show us the frame rate. We then simply press the shortcut we assigned to cycle through the performance overlays until we get to the reflex analyzer overlay. Or we press the shortcut we assigned to the performance menu and then select reflex analyzer here. Enabling that overlay triggered a couple of things. Inside the game the tiny version of the reflex flash indicator was activated and appeared on the left side of the monitor. But not only that, the reflex latency analyzer inside the monitor was also activated and automatically configured. So the monitor now knows where the game shows the flash indicator, which changes its color from black to white when we press the left mouse button. Now let's take a look at the information that we get in that overlay. On top is the frame rate the game is running at. Next we have the GPU utilization, which tells us how hard the graphics card is working to achieve that frame rate. Render latency is the time from where the frame is ready to be rendered to when the graphics card completely rendered that frame. PC latency is especially interesting because it includes the delays coming from the operating system, the game itself, as well as the time required to render the image. So in most cases the reason why a game feels bad is found here and improving the responsiveness of games as well as how stable the latency of your system is mostly involves tweaking settings that also affect PC latency. 
The chart that we will create later in the video should come in real handy when you are looking at data from a system where you have problems with how responsive a game feels. Then we have the exact position where the monitor is looking for the reflex flash indicator, followed by the internal latency of the mouse you connected to the monitor. Now there are mice which fully support the reflex latency analyzer and so can report the internal latency. But you can also use a mouse which does not support that. In that case an average value for the mouse latency will be used to calculate the end-to-end -end delay of your system. As long as you use a high quality mouse and make sure that you select a polling rate of 1000 or more, it is usually not a problem if you don't have a mouse that is fully compatible with the reflex latency analyzer, as it is unlikely that a high quality mouse is the reason for why a game feels unresponsive. But if you want the most accurate results, then you do need a mouse which supports the reflex latency analyzer. Then there's the PC and display latency. This is the time from where Windows receives the mouse click event to the time where the reflex latency analyzer inside the monitor detected that the indicator changed from black to white. Then we have system latency. This is the complete end-to-end -end delay from the moment you click the left mouse button to the flash indicator turning white on the monitor. So this value also includes the delay of the mouse. So to measure the end-to-end -end latency of our system, we simply press the left mouse button and the overlay will tell us the time from pressing the left mouse button to the result showing up on the monitor. The result being that the flash indicator changes from black to white every time we press the left mouse button. So to measure the end-to-end -end latency of our system, we simply press the left mouse button and the overlay will tell us the time from pressing the left mouse button to the result showing up on the monitor. The result being that the flash indicator changes from black to white every time we press the left mouse button. So we can then keep clicking the left mouse button and monitor the results in the overlay. Should we want to reset the average values, then we can do so by using the shortcut we assigned to that action. Another important thing to know here is that since the reflex latency analyzer monitors the flash indicator and not the muscle flash of the gun, we measure the true end-to-end -end system latency, even when the game designer uses a trigger delay on all or some of the guns in the game. Another positive side effect is that we are not forced to stand still while we test system latency. In fact, we can continuously measure system latency while we are playing the game which means that we can track system latency throughout an entire match and so measure how our current settings affect how stable or unstable the latency of our system is. Furthermore, we are also able to measure system latency for characters or games where there is no muscle flash. But how accurate is this reflex latency analyzer when we compare it to Nvidia's LDAT, which monitors the actual pixels on the display? To test this, I used both the Reflex Latency Analyzer and LDAT simultaneously. And while the results are not an exact match, the data generated by the Reflex Latency Analyzer is very close to what you would get with LDAT, which is not as easy to use and requires to connect wires to the PCB of the mouse you are testing with. Another concern you might have is if passing the mouse through the monitor increases the latency of your mouse. But as you can see here, the system latency does not improve overall when you connect the mouse directly to the PC. So unless you want to do some very special tests, you don't need an LDAT. The reflex latency analyzer is very easy to use and provides useful and accurate data when it comes to troubleshooting or optimizing your system. So testing the latency of your system in games like Overwatch, Call of Duty or Fortnite is extremely easy and straightforward because these can configure the reflex latency analyzer automatically. You just select either the reflex analyzer or the latency option for the performance overlay and it will do the rest for you. In the description below you can find a link to a website where Nvidia provides a growing list of games which are capable of configuring the reflex latency analyzer automatically. But how about games like CSGO, which sadly do not support that? Well, we can also use the reflex latency analyzer to test games like CSGO. However, the process is a bit more complex. First, we press Alt and R to enable the performance overlay. Next, we get this warning that we have to configure the reflex latency analyzer manually. To do that, we must access the on-screen display menu of the monitor. Enable the reflex latency analyzer. Enable Show Monitoring Rectangle 
select centered preset and then adjust the location of the measuring rectangle so that it covers the area where the muscle flesh appears. Then we open the on-screen display menu again and change the size of the measuring rectangle so that it is neither too big nor too small. Since the reflex latency analyzer does detect that the game cannot auto-configure the reflex latency analyzer for us, it would be great if it could then at least enable the reflex latency analyzer inside the monitor, reset the position of the measuring rectangle and switch it on, so that we then only need to adjust its size and location. Ideally it would also remember what size and location we used for a game and then load these settings again when we test it the next time. This would make testing system latency a lot easier for games which are currently unable to automatically configure the reflex latency analyzer for us. So for games like CSGO the reflex latency analyzer must see a clearly visible muscle flash, which means that we do not only need to choose a gun which can provide that, we also need a dark background behind that muscle flash so that the reflex latency analyzer gets that sudden change in brightness it is looking for to detect the input. If you test against a bright background, then a flash might either not be detected at all or it can cause too short as well as too long latency results. This sadly means that for games like CSGO you cannot use the reflex latency analyzer to measure the latency of your system while you are playing. You can only measure it while you are standing still, using a gun which has a strong muscle flash while testing against a dark background. Also, if the game developer decided to use a trigger delay for the guns, then this delay will be included in your results. And if the developer uses different trigger delays for different guns, then you might get very different latency results depending on which gun you use for your tests, which can lead to very confusing results. So for games like CSGO, we can only hope that the developers will eventually support NVIDIA's reflex latency technology. So this overlay provides us with a lot of useful data. But if we want to track our system latency throughout an entire match, then we won't be able to keep an eye on that overlay. Sadly, it does not get included in NVIDIA's game capture recordings, so we cannot use that to look at the overlay later. We could use OBS, which I used to record the overlay for this video. But going through a long gameplay recording constantly monitoring that overlay is not the best way to find out what is going on with our system latency. Luckily, we can simply log all data into a CSV file. So how does that work? Just like before, we simply use the shortcut to cycle through the performance overlays until we get to the reflex analyzer overlay, or we use the performance menu to select it directly. Once the match begins, we then press the shortcut we assigned to the performance logging. Inside the overlay, we can see that the logging started. If you don't like that large overlay, you can also switch to the much smaller latency overlay, but be aware that the reflex latency analyzer only works with these two overlays. And once the match is over, we then simply press the logging shortcut again to stop logging. Now we can simply repeat that a couple of times to either see how stable the latency of our system is across multiple matches, or to find out if the map we play on makes a difference. Or we could change some settings before we go into the next match, so that we can see how that change affects the latency of our system. But be aware that in some games you must restart the game for changes to be activated, even when the game does not tell you that a restart is required. Now I've simply recorded 5 separate matches to see how stable my system latency is across multiple matches. So for each match I get 2 CSV files. One for the latency measured by the reflex latency analyzer and one for the performance data. When we open one of these files in Notepad then we can see that it contains a ton of data, which is quite hard to look at and even harder to draw a conclusion from. So we need to present them differently to find out what is going on with our system latency. For that purpose I've created an Excel template which you can download for free, the link is in the description. First we need to extract the downloaded zip file. Inside that folder we find a results folder, which has a few subfolders. Now we simply move the latency CSV file from the first match into the first latency folder, and the performance CSV file from the first match into the first performance folder. Then we continue to do the same with the remaining CSV files. Next we must choose the correct Excel file, 
which one depends on your location, specifically if you have your Windows and Excel set to use either a dot or a comma as decimal separator. On my machine a comma is used as decimal separator, so I must select this Excel file. Now Excel tells me that this project wants to load data from external sources. This is because it will load the data from the CSV files we placed in the subfolders, so we need to enable that content. The data that you see here is just a sample. To load the data from our CSV files we must go to Data and click on Refresh All. Now Excel loads the data from the CSV files and refreshes the charts, which can take a moment. On the first page we can now compare the system latency of these five test runs. Here we see the longest, average and shortest delays, as well as one standard deviation which helps us to judge how stable the system latency is. In my case we can see that the latency of my system was quite stable throughout all matches, which is good. As I said, you could try different settings inside the game and then compare how these affect system latency here. Then there are five more pages, where each one is for one of the test runs. When we look at the first run, we can see the frame rate, average PC latency and system latency. So if you are troubleshooting why a game only sometimes feels off, then this chart should help you to identify what was happening at that time like a drop in the frame rate or a sudden spike of the PC latency. You can also rename the CSV files to something more meaningful. And when you then refresh the data, the new file name is displayed as the title of the chart. If you like to store your results outside of Excel or share them, then you can right click on the chart and export that as an image. And that's it. This is how you use the Reflex Latency Analyzer to put an end to the guesswork when it comes to how good or bad the latency of your system is. So I hope that you found the information in this video helpful and if you end up trying my Excel template then I would be happy to get your feedback. So until next time, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.